What's up, everyone? Throws Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Neck, and I have an album review for you. This one is once again brought to us courtesy of our friends at Screaming Toilet. Again, fun site full of podcasts, reviews, even stuff about toys, movies, etc. It's a fun time. Definitely go check it out. There's even a store in there. Go buy some stuff. So today I'm reviewing the new album from Sculpture, Einzenzeit. I think I pronounced that right. My German's terrible, too, much like any other language other than English. But this German band formed in 2009, and this is their second full length, but their first on FDA Records, which, great label, definitely getting a lot of stuff from them here lately. This band also features one of the guitarists from Evoked, which is another band on FDA Records that I reviewed last year that had an absolutely killer debut album. So this album opens up with a track called The Storm, with ellipses at the end, as in the next track is a continuation of. And immediately you get an isolated vocal roar, very almost kind of dry lunged and then boom into a D-beat stomp of a song. Now, right away I instantly loved the guitar tone on here. It is very reminiscent of Ace Fix. In fact, the feel of this album is very much like Ace Fix. But along with their very crunchy tone, you get a little bit of that Swedish buzzsaw in there, so it's kind of like that mix between Ace Fix and a band like Dismember. This band already had its hooks in me at that point. Now this song serves as kind of an intro, and generally I bet you about interest, but this is actually a song where the back end of it kind of slows down to almost a death do me pace, and then boom, you're going to the next track, ebbs into stalemate. And this is where you get a real feel of how dynamic this band's writing can be. Style-wise, they are very similar to a band like Hail of Bullets and Bullthrower, which we're jamming right now. This is all very war-themed, but not only about the battles themselves, but the hardship of war as well. And these guys are really good at bringing melody in here. There's a lot of distant melodies that come in and sort of accentuate the song a little bit. Not only making it powerful, but making it very sorrowful as well. Now this song really breaks into a death march. It's very similar to the three albums that God the Throne did in a row all about World War II as well. Very heavy, nice solid groove to it. Very empowering actually, it just sounds nasty. Now one of my favorite moments in this song is where the bass gets isolated and you start hearing this lead melody come in and it just turns into this giant breakdown towards the end. The song is very heavy, very powerful, one of my favorite ones on here for sure. But honestly it got even better with the next track, Und Er Itz. Again, sorry about the German. Now this is where they introduce some samples. They throw in samples from old war movies and this really helps with the atmosphere. And the quotes are definitely more about the soldiers and what they had to live through and this is really good for, again, building that atmosphere. It's not all about just the battles themselves, it's about the hardship of war again. Now this song brings in some blast beats when it kicks in, and then more into kind of a groovy section as the verses come in, and then brings in some palm muted chugs. Like, this song is just all about heavy, and it delivers on that. Now the lead melodies on this have almost kind of a death doom feel to it. They feel very sullen, and it's kind of cool how this song can switch from empowering to sullen within a few seconds and really not lose any sense of the song and then just go into a bloodbath like breakdown this band just screams heavy now fireflies throughout these guys i thought it was just going to be great to like a little interlude with some passages again and while the end of und er it's actually has a little sample again from a movie this one turns into this brief instrumental that leads in well to the next track hinter symphony which is another marvelous song on here. And again, I didn't really mind so much there was interlude. Generally, I bitch about interludes and intros and all that. Like, sometimes it just gets to be a bit much, but they use actual songs. There's actual, like, build up to the next song. And it doesn't feel as though it's just a continuation of the song before it or just a brief part that could have been included in the song that comes later. It's its own little song, but it works as a good hype for the next song. Now, Hinter Symphony is where some of my issues with the album came up. Some of the lead melodies, how they're recorded, just sounds odd. Uh, sometimes the tone is just kind of muddy and indistinguishable. There were points in this album, I think in a later track called uh, Hell is a Field in France, 
where I thought the lead melody was actually a ringing in my ears. And granted, that could actually happen. I go to a lot of shows, and I don't always wear ear protection, but I listened to it several times, and the way those lead melodies recorded were just kind of extra muted and muffled, and it just didn't sound right. I didn't really feel like a really good melody. It just sounded like a kind of a droning noise in the background. And this kind of pops up throughout the album as a little bit of an issue, but they change around the tone or the filter or whatever, and it sounds good again, but they keep going back to it. It's just kind of a thing there that just kind of bugged me a bit. Now, the title track was another standout for me. I really liked how this one started off very death doomy, but then moved into kind of a mid-tempo sort of tribal death march, and really this is the only time where I think like a tribal rhythm is used on here, and it's used very effectively. And from there, it breaks into a cool D-beat stomp, and I really love that transition. It just feels like an anthem. It feels very empowering. It feels very much like a bolt thrower song, which, yeah, you can win me over with bolt thrower, like, every time. And one of the absolute heaviest tracks in here is Yiparit? Yiparit? I don't know how to say that word right. But this is, I think, one of the most fiercely just straightforward death metal songs there isn't any elements of melodic death metal or death doom, it just feels like a straight out death metal song. Really heavy tremolo riffs, very fast paced, it's fiercely energetic, and it just comes out swinging. It's a really cool sample from an old movie, of course. Now again, these samples I don't think are overused, they're used kind of sparingly, they're peppered throughout the album, and they're used effectively, and the fact that they chose some older movies is kind of a cool thing because you get to hear the crackling of the old audio on there, and it just works with the feel of the album. Now this song actually has even some moments I would say are kind of black and on here with a very atmospheric tremolo. Even over the big breakdown it still comes across as very black and this was one of my favorite tracks on here. I, I definitely plan on returning to it. Now All Quiet on the Western Front is the closing track, technically. This one leads in with a movie quote, really good one, and then goes into this very somber guitar harmony that comes in and then just immediately erupts into Honestly, kind of melodic death metal. It really kind of has a hypocrisy-like feel to it. And this one really has like a anthemic quality to the leads. I really liked how it kind of felt uplifting. Like this was the, you know, the ray of hope at the end of the war. Like we knew it was going to close. And I really liked how it felt. It was really cool how they shifted from sullen and downtrodden to uplifting and anthemic in that same song. Now the song ends very well, but there's left about 30 plus seconds of silence, and I don't know if that's intended to be a moment of silence, or that was just a mistake and an oversight in the studio, but either way, I just kind of wondered about that. Now, this was the last studio track on this album. This was what closed the album, but there was one more track on here, a live track from their previous album called No Rest, No Sleep, No Peace. Now, this was a tribute to their bassist, who had unfortunately passed in 2017, and they wanted him to be on the album, which I think is a really cool thing, so they threw in a ripping, awesome live track. And I really dug this. This is definitely going to make me want to look for their other albums for sure, because this is just everything this album's about except live. And they sound incredible live, so awesome work, guys. Overall, I'm going to give this album four stars. This is a killer listen if you're a fan of Ace Fix, Halo Bolts, Bolt Thrower, any of that shit you'll definitely dig this. This is just engaging war metal, well-recorded, well-written, just heavier than hell. It's awesome. So, if you guys like this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, because we do shit like this all the time. Catch you guys later.